Hi, Mike Kennedy. We're talking about the Minox B today. This camera is from a ninth, around 1960. You can see it's extremely small. It had a fixed aperture of f3.5. And because it was fixed, you would adjust the shutter speeds. You had a light meter that was coupled to the shutter speed indicator. So if you match the needle here, you would get the correct exposure. The only problem with these cameras is they age, that these uh, cells become less, less sensitive, especially if they've been, you know, if they've been sitting out as a display item, uh, the photo cells tend not to be working as well. It's better if you find one that would be have stored in the dark. But, so we've got an extremely small piece of film in here. Only eight by 11 millimeters is being exposed on this roll, which could hold this cassette in here can hold up to 50 exposures. And that's quite a bit and it's quite small. So uh, this was billed as the any man's camera, but it, it was all, it was really expensive at the time. Uh, in the latter years of Minox, they had an LX series and the cameras were like a thousand or $1,200. So, but even back then, if you, we go back in time, get a list price for this, you would see that in 1960, this would have cost quite a bit. So with this smaller format, one of the things we, well, we get several things. Of course, we have a small camera, sticks in your pocket anywhere. Uh, we have this amazing depth of field. As the format gets smaller, the depth of field increases. So it makes it easier to focus, which is good because this, you have to estimate focus distances. There's no range finder in it. You don't look through the lens and see it being focused because uh, in the interest of making this camera small, all of that had to not be in the camera. So one of the things it was billed for and what it made this popular for spies and believe it or not, this camera was issued to as a standard piece of equipment that uh, spies in the US, the CIA and in Russia would have. They would have a Minox B or, or one, maybe a model earlier or later than that, depending on the time period. <coughs> so uh, as you focus closer, well, let me go here first. If we can set this at a certain distance so that everything from six feet to infinity will be in focus. So can, we can go around taking really good pictures without even focusing as long as we keep everything six feet away. Well, you can focus closer. And one of the things that you can do is with this is you can ex you can focus extremely close. So they invented this chain and they put beads on the chain at different distances. This is eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches, and 18 inches. That would allow you, as you get closer, the depth of field gets smaller. At this uh, distance, you could hold the camera and get an accurate uh, distance, and then you could take your picture. So you could copy things, or you could take pictures of small things, say I have a flower and I'm doing that, but you could also copy documents. So this became a big use for this camera. If you had to you know, steal some secrets, you could take a blueprint, you could copy it, you could copy documents, you could copy chemical formulas, whatever it happens to be, uh, and you could take 50 frames on this. So there was quite a bit of information that could be stored on this. But so we've got an eight inch bead that would cover approximately a three by five area with an inch depth of field. So you could be off by, you know, a little bit. At the 10 inch bead, you had six by four inches and it was a little more than an inch depth of field. Then at 12 inches, you got nine by eight and you had three inches of depth of field, so that's quite a bit more. Then at 18 inches, you had an eight by 12 or four inches. And you can see right here, this is kind of the magic number because you can see that you can fit the, at using this last bead, oops, the last bead here, you could co copy an entire eight by 10 page onto this, uh, onto this film. And that's indeed what it was used for. Uh, uh, one of the famous cases of spies in the U.S., the Rosenbergs, they were partially convicted 
by uh, the FBI or CIA, whoever's trying them, I guess it was the FBI, was able to match their Minox B that they had. It made specific, the film runs through this and it's really tight, okay? So there, the film can get scratched. And they can be scratches you can see or scratches you can't see when you're actually printing. But the FBI was able to match the scratches created by their camera with uh, film that they had recovered uh, that was going to be placed in enemy hands, in the Russian hands. So that was like a slam dunk convicting them, was using uh, the ability for the FBI to trace it back directly to their camera. There's all kinds of other things for that case. We'll, maybe we'll talk about it some other time. But, but you can see, you can get, uh, besides photographing things uh, that are far away, you can photograph things that are very close. And uh, up to three by five, that's not bad. That's a very small area. So uh, you can get quite close with it. Now, the fact that it had a single F number meant that you had to vary the shutter speed. The shutter is coupled to this uh, light meter. You put the ASA of the film, and then the light meter, you would, you would press the little button here, the needle moves, and you would match needle it. And as you match needled it, it would uh, give you set the correct exposure. Now you see these being used on movies all the time, and it's kind of they they always kind of do it wrong, because the problem too was when you're copying documents, you usually use a higher resolution film because you have to see detail. Higher resolution film is slower, and back in 1960, film was a lot slower than it is now. So basically, a lot of times. <laughs> They had a small camera, but they had to, sometimes they had to have a large light bulb with them to create enough light to actually take the pictures. Or they would, you know, uh, use lighting that was there somehow, maybe take a, a, a desk lamp and put it near whatever they were doing. But uh, having enough light for the older style films w was a problem for them if they were, like, you know, doing it in the middle of the night. But you'll see uh, shows where the, the what are James Bond movies, all kinds of different movies will have one. And they'll just be, you know, uh, -bump, bump, bump. You t to take a picture, you press a shutter button, then to wind the film, you move this in and out like this. You would take a picture here. You can see the, the frame here, the eye viewing frame, so you can uh, frame it in the way you want. You press a button, and then you would close it. So they'll show them on some show going blah, 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 but it's like, None of those pictures would come out because they're not being careful about their focusing. And a lot of times they didn't, they, they won't even have enough light. So, uh, now just to add on to something little, of course, what's happened at the end of the kind of the, the rise of film getting to its peak of perfection, kind of, that it obtained was that we had some extremely, extremely fine-grained sharp films that were would have been hard for people to even imagine back in the 1960s. Unfortunately digital <laughs> came in and squashed everything but right now we have films that make these cameras uh, much more useful than they were to begin with and uh, what you can do is you can actually buy film places. Minox is no longer involved really in cameras or film and processing but you can buy it from other places or you can slit it down yourself but the idea is you can take like a color film like ektar 100 kodak ektar 100 put it in this camera and you can get some really nice pictures from it uh in black and white some people go to the contortions of using a document film like i was talking about but processing it in such a way that instead of getting just black and white, you know, a kind of a either really dark lines or really white. There's special ways you can develop that film to give you more of a continuous tone image. Uh, you could, you'd be amazed what results you can get. So that's a little about focusing. We'll uh, continue on with different topics as we go along. Maybe we'll talk a little more about the spies too as well.